All right, this is Elwood EQ, and I have gone through a little bit of drama today. <clears throat> As I try to make known, I play on Linux, and uh, this is not uh, Gem Snoot. This is Waydark, another version of Waydark on a TLP server. This is the Thornblade server. The TLPs are very popular uh, for a lot of good reasons, a lot of bad reasons. And um, I personally tried the Ragefire TLP when they uh, first started to basically sort of really charge hard on the TLP time lock uh, progression servers. That's what TLP stands for. And um, <coughs> they. Uh, sounded like a good deal anyway to make a long story short I was very disillusioned by it and it turned out to be basically ended up being a chrono farming fiasco and a lot of toxic behavior that really turned me off <clears throat> but uh, the so for those of you that don't know, time, lock, uh, time locked progression servers are servers for, I, I would assume it's mainly for older games. I've only ever seen EverQuest and, and also I think, uh, I don't know if you want to consider uh, World of Warcraft Classic to be a time locked type of thing, but it kind of is, I suppose. But what EverQuest does is they, they have many, many, they have 22 expansions currently, soon to be 23. And uh, what what they do is they start they turn everything off all the way back to vanilla everquest of 1999 they keep some quality of life improvements it's a general rule uh there's just a number of things that I'll, i might point out as we play a little bit but that are kind of held on to from the modern game as it's sort of evolved but uh for the most part, the actual game is pretty enjoyable in a better sense, in my opinion, from uh, uh, the vanilla. But what the problem is, in my opinion, is that people, because of the chrono system they have, that they admittingly really kind of need to have in order to keep the lights on, um, has created such a toxic environment in uh, these TLP servers. Uh, that uh, it ruins and it really misses the mark as far as trying to recapture in even some sort of marginal way uh, the glory of EverQuest back in 99, right? So, it's just the way it is. <laughs> um, it just didn't work. So, but with all that said, this latest progression server has some things going for it that I think in the long haul might actually appeal to me. And one of these things is... Um, uh, the loot system is different. See, they usually uh, they attach a lot of special rules to these uh, time lock pro progression servers. And uh, I don't know if I've chosen to carry any web, any of this stuff or not. No, it's just stackables. So I'm gonna let that stuff go. Anyway, um, I'm gonna so I can concentrate on talking. I'm gonna. I always have problems with playing and talking. I'm sorry. Um, so the so the special rules, okay. Um, this particular uh, server, uh, one effort that they tried to make to combat the toxicity of uh, boxing to the extreme that can have uh, is the mad dash for pixelated loot in this virtual world happens is they implemented a rule set that they call true boxing. What this means is 
so normally what people can do is they can take EverQuest and they can run multiple instances of EverQuest on the same machine in order to play more than one account at, at the same time. Many times, most of the time, I think they usually use software to help them manage all the different characters that they are trying to play at the same time. Other times, they use a method that they call alt tabbing that you'll that'll switch from instance. You know, it'll progress through uh, each instance of EverQuest so that you can you know start on one guy you do an action alt tab it's a different character you do whatever you want to do with that one you alt tab and so forth right <clears throat> because of their mercenaries system which are npc helpers that uh that are attached to each player each uh, uh, uh each uh, character what this happens what this happens is uh, a a full party in everquest is six members each merc counts as a separate member so if you're able to box as they say three accounts at the same time that'll instantly give you a full party of six three of which are fully automated without any extra third party help or anything they just they do their own thing so all you really have to worry about is either alt tabbing or trying to coordinate three regular uh characters and uh Sounds very complicated, and you know I've actually tried it on the regular live server once for a little bit when I was playing a ranger, and uh, I just alt tabbed, and I tried to you know juggle just two players, and I was able to do it, but it certainly is a hassle to do for the benefit that you're getting, which is a good amount. Basically, what you're doing is you are able to tackle content that is really not meant to be tackled by just one person so and I say one person not one character so this enables one person to tackle basically group content if they just even if they just play two accounts at the same time and surely when they play three accounts at the same time now they so later on they, you know, they've, they've kind of tried to tone this down a little bit, even on the live servers, by uh, making sure at least the progression is, they have uh, scripts going in the progression that makes it ex exceptionally hard, if not impossible, to be able to box your way through them completely. Now, people are very uh, adaptable and, uh, that you know, they... they they're clever and try to figure way their ways around stuff and for the most part that strategy that they're using is really just more or less kind of slowed people down they've still to my mind anyway or my observance is just chat and stuff like that and just talking they've been able to kind of get around that it just takes them a little longer right <laughs> um so I don't I don't box I, I tried it once and I tried it like I said and I think I I gave it a good month or so doing it and I really I just don't like it really is really the bottom line I don't like it it's a lot of hassle to get something done just on your own and I'd rather just log on and play instead of having to because you have to use auto follow to get anywhere and then you're just it's just kind of a hassle you just log you have to log each account on one at a time and sometimes there's, things are slow I just want to log on and go why because you know it's, it's just how I like to go I like that I like to then you know if something happens you know uh, some member of my family needs me for something or I got work to do and I'm on a short time leash if you will for it to play um, then I just skeleton here I'm gonna break this rule I promised you guys sorry then uh, then that you know I can just do it I can get off and everything um, and that's fine um, so that's just how I roll anyway so there's a true box thing where you can't do that in just one machine if you want to box you can box they will let you box of course they can't just stop that Cloth choker, do I need this? Yes, I do. So I will loot that. 
and I will use it, and I will be happy. Um, this is not my normal method of, of leveling here. I'm just doing... Yeah, I'm a necro, and this guy's a necro. I can't say no to a skeleton, so... <laughs> um, not this early, anyway. Uh... So okay, so the true box thing. So the kid, they have to joke. They have to have a separate machine, right? So and so, which is a bit more of a hassle. Um, a lot of a lot of people that play this game are middle aged. They're kind of IT nerds a little bit, and they got extra machines that are able to run EverQuest laying around their house. Many a lot of them are, and so they've done this. But it's still it's, and I'm sure that maybe they've created a third party either created or found a third party uh, bit of software that can coordinate two machines through their network in a similar fashion that the normal software they use on regular live servers might work or a similar because uh, the everquest you know the everquest process and th that software uh, because you're you know, you don't really own the game. I mean, you know, Daybreak owns the game. You basically buy it through your subscription and having it on a machine. You're much like Windows. You're kind of leasing it, right? So they have control over what they're going to do. What you know, so their domain ends, starts, and ends with their software. Okay, and uh, how other software interacts with their software is also their right to kind of mess with but they have no right to mess with how your machine operates outside of their domain which on your local area network and other machines uh, as long as you're doing things to coordinate those machines that doesn't really directly impact their software uh, they can't say crap about it really so I'm sure now uh, there's some people I'm sure that are having two machines and they're basically you know you ever like back in the 80s uh, keyboard players and, and pop groups and rock groups used to have mul multiple keyboards and they would you know have one hand on the one keyboard one hand on another playing you know their songs or whatever uh, <laughs> it's probably a similar thing like that right somebody's kind of doing a 1980s keyboard you know version of EverQuest kind of thing, kind of juggling their two characters at the same time, which would be actually kind of impressive to see, actually. I mean, these people go to great lengths to avoid grouping with other players. It's, it's a little insane. I don't necessarily, because of just my groove, I don't necessarily like grouping all the time. I like to group sometime, and if somebody really needs my help and I have the time, or they really want to group with me and they're kind of fun to hang out with and stuff, I'll group for a while, half hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour or so. But uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not just so determined to not group that I'm going to go through all kinds of extra crap just to, so I can just be totally self-sufficient and not need anybody else. I mean, come on, man. It's an MMO, right? Uh... And MMO does not stand for massively market opportunities or you know whatever. <laughs> um, so massively marketed opportunities, I guess is be the more correct way to say something like that. But okay, so that's the true boxing, okay? And that they've had other servers that have had that system, and they've been successful within the TLP framework. TOP, the Time Lock Progression Servers Framework, right? The other uh, thing about this particular server, this one and Mischief, is that uh, they have something that they've, a new thing that they've implemented that they call a randomized loot system. Which is, as I understand it, this is my first time playing on this server with this rule set, and this guy is level 2. You know, I made him, and I just kind of monkeyed around with him a little bit before doing this. Um, he is a... Uh... Anyway, so um, 
so I'm new. I, I've, but the randomized, the, the way I understand it is that uh, you have a, you know, never of course call them named mobs, but you know the rare mobs that uh, are all even in vanilla. You know, they weren't quite as plentiful in vanilla, but there was a every dungeon has got a number of boss or rare mobs or named mobs. Um, what they've figured out or what they've set in their system is that each, each of those rare mobs they've randomized the loot so that one rare mob that normally their loot table is a very strict certain amount of things now uh, certain rare mobs within a level range pretty narrow for understand roughly four or five levels maybe um, they share the same loot table so they've basically taken they've basically you know they've listed all their rare mobs in their game and their levels and they've taken the and they've sectioned them off into groups right and which means so so any mob any rare mob that is within that group they all share the same loot table and when you kill that rare mob it's just a random thing that they will um, go ahead and you know drop whatever loot that uh, any of the you know that that loot table set that larger loot table says right so you might be able to get a flowing black silk sash from a mob that is that back in the original vanilla days wasn't really that wasn't on their loot table right there's some warping here going on look at that uh, very interesting um, so that's I, that I find that interesting because as maybe some of you might already know about me my preference and how I like to play is that when I'm playing my main character who, who happens to be named Waydark on uh, the Cassic Thule server is he's a necro and I just like the solo and what I'll do is whenever there's a new expat comes out you know whenever I get up to that level where I can kinda hang in there get a new pet or whatever I need to do um, I find a spot where there is a rare that I can kill with with uh, with you know at least relatively good success rates and uh, I can kill solo which necros currently is really almost the only class that can really do that in current content now because of the charm system that uh, we can use that really no other class can really duplicate when you couple it with our DPS and everything but that's you know that's, it's neither here nor there here but I'm just saying that um, that's how I like to play and what I do you know so I get one rare mob and they all have the same loot every time but there's uh, the tiered progressions of the gear that you get in the current um, in the newer ex uh, expansion packs uh, they, there's a they have a, a level one group gear and there's a level two group gear it's a little harder to get and there's a level three group gear it's actually trade skilled and there's a lot of trade skillers in this game they've made that a little bit more lucrative and since I'm playing by myself and I'm just saving all the money on just the one tune anyway and once in a while I might actually get a chrono give into the system and just sell the chrono for plat so that I can buy the trade skill things that I need and I just get I get the one rare drop that's off those rare mobs that I kill over and over again that all those rare mobs hit drop that you need in order to make to put in the, the trade school container to make the gear that will be the tier 3 group gear so and uh, currently on my main I've got all tier 3 group gear on my main with the exception of three multi-stat augs that I still need to kind of finish but there are ones that are not super geared toward casters per se so I'll kind of get them when I get them kind of a thing my stats are pretty good and I got everything else all the focus effects everything's all good so um, so that's fine um, you've got the weapon and stuff like that so I got so he's squared away pretty much for the next X pack my goal when I play my main necro is to keep the hamster wheel going just because I like playing and 
as long as I can get as close as I can to tier three. I, matter of fact, most of the time I can't even I can't reach that. Most of the time I'm I'm lucky enough to get uh, tier one group gear with uh, a mix of maybe a few tier two pieces in there maybe or maybe get lucky with uh, some chase loot they call it. Just look it up if you don't know what that is. I'm not going to cover it. Now. But uh, you know maybe one or two chase loot items that I got lucky on whatever that I got to drop but uh, and then that's pretty much the my power level for my character this the COV expansion I'm probably got my necro main the most squared way I've ever had him <laughs> and playing him for what two or three years or something like that is my main uh, so that's kind of it feels kind of good um, gonna try not to get too addicted to that feeling because it's not gonna always be a real a realistic goal to make uh, they might change some mechanics or something like that that might actually make it less possible for me to kill rares on my own so when that's the case then you're lucky to get a full set of t1 mostly on your own kind of a thing with some grouping and stuff it's just usually the vibe I'm normally in uh, and that's fine. It's what I have the time for. And it keeps the hamster wheel going for this game. The, I just like the feel of it. I like the pace of it. Um, as down as I might seem <laughs> on the game and the developers that have developed it, uh, I'm not really... I mean, those are annoyances and aggravations I have, which everybody does when they play a game. But overall, yeah, this is my MMO. This is... I enjoy this way more than I do uh, World of Warcraft, which I've also played. I just do. I like the pacing of it. The World of Warcraft uh, Classic, I tried that, and I played that for about four or five months. And that wasn't bad, but um, the players, the player base, I don't enjoy most of the time. And World of Warcraft. <coughs> So enough of that. So that's the randomized loop, <laughs> as I've strayed off of that. Um, I've not timed myself here, so let me get it played. Session 25 minutes. I got five minutes to go. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. I don't want to run this over. This is going to be a lot of talking, you guys. Sorry. Um, uh, what's the other? Okay, so you got randomized loop, true box. Time lock progression. Another characteristic of all these time lock progressions is that you have to have a all access count or like a gold account. I do believe you might be able to use a chrono on your account and be able to play on these without paying a subscription per se, like I do. But uh, I don't want to. I, you know, I pay a prescription I, or subscription. I don't. Uh, you know, I don't want to rely. I'm I'm an adult. I can afford 15 bucks a month. It's not that big a deal. Um, I'd rather just have that security. I only pay for one account. I'm not going to pay for more than one. You know, <laughs> this is one. It's just another reason why I don't box, because you have to keep the all accounts current if you want to have all of your box characters in the same, you know, level. There's some warping going on here, which is a little weird that I wonder what's going on. So there's that. So you have to have an account that has been flagged as being gold or all access. That's what they call it now. And that's and you, which means you at least have to consume a chrono, buy a chrono and use it, or you have to actually pay them the 15 bucks for the month to have the your account all access. So, that tends to weed the free players. They just kind of, you know, it kind of weeds them out. Normally you would think, oh, well, it kind of gets rid of a lot of the riffraff, right? No, not really. <laughs> a lot of times the most, the most toxic riffraff, uh, toxic players in this game, they're the ones that play like 24-7, and they basically mine Chrono on the TLP servers and they don't pay any actual, they're paying with their 
massive amounts of time they're playing the game. How they're able to live as a person and do that, I have no idea. Unless they're still living with mommy and daddy or they got some other, maybe you got a sugar daddy, sugar mama, whatever. I don't know what the hell's going on. They're getting their money in real life somehow, some way. But, uh, and I don't care. I don't want to concern myself with it. That's what they're doing. I got my opinions on it. And as long as they don't interfere with just my enjoyment of the game, whatever. It's obvious. It's been many years since they've had this chrono system. And Daybreak has been very clear that they're not going to... Their system is their system. And that's the way it is. Another thing about that's not really part of a rule set that is a, a element of this these TLP servers is toxic play. You have chrono farmers, they call them, that organize themselves usually in guilds, and then you also have really try-hard, hardcore raiding guilds that really they participate in the chrono crap too. And what they do is they they just bully. They bully. It's usually just one guild sometimes it's more than one but one guild will just bully other players and just take over camps and stuff like that and uh, that's what the really bad thing about this these servers here is that you get a lot more of that on these servers than just the regular servers that tends to go away more once they get past the omens of war level which was the la the expansion they started, I think they started the, the Epic 2.0s in. Once you get beyond that, the, the asshats kind of, they start dribbling, they kind of start quitting and they move on to something else. Usually by that, by the time that happens, they've started up a new fresh TLP and then they prefer to just go to a fresh TLP and just start doing the same crap. And then the population that is left behind are generally the pretty much the good people <laughs> okay <laughs> the decent people that are just trying to have fun right and uh, so the reason I've started on here and I do have a little bit more hope for this one than I did rage fire or lockjaw is because the randomized loot system really fits my play styles I just described just a little bit ago I I have a style where I, I find a rare that I can kill and I just kill it over and over again. I just stay at that camp. You know, I'll log in for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, try to get the named or the rare to spawn, get them to spawn, kill them, hopefully get some good loot, and then I'm off. Well, sometimes I try to kill them, you know, depending on how quick that happens. You know, I, I try to keep my play sessions no, no longer than about 90 minutes. Occasionally, especially if I group, it'll drift beyond that, but I usually i am much more likely to group on the weekend. I hardly ever really group during the week, unless it's for a very specific thing that I know is not likely to kind of run super far. Um, so... So that's so my hope is because the randomized loot kind of fits with my play style. Once the asshats get off, once this this server gets up to about gets past omens of war, and maybe I can make this a new home. You know, I don't know. It really seems to fit my play style a lot more than. Oh, the other element to the randomized loot is the free trade. It's also free trade. Sorry, this is the very end here. Uh, I'm really sorry. This is gonna be. It's definitely going to be a little longer than I have been keeping these. This is going to be a new series, by the way. Uh, it's going to name it the Thornblade series. And uh, anyway, uh, and I'm probably going to nix the Gem Snoot series. I'm sorry if you were enjoying that. Uh, this is relatively a similar kind of play style. Um, anyway, free trade. Free trade is when not all, I don't think it's all, but most, the vast majority of items that were tagged no drop are now tradable. So you can trade things and, you know, to sell or buy or trade amongst your characters or whatever without any hassle. Uh, 
no drop gear and that's it's uh, it's very helpful in the older expansions but it's especially helpful in the newer expansions from like Seas of, De of Destruction on probably even Fader on that goes to Fader I think that's what it's called whatever I, I, I really the more modern expansions past Omens of War I get fuzzy on the order and everything but um, bottom line is that yeah so you could uh, you know once you accumulate the plat which eventually just happens I mean you just just through playing stuff like that if you happen to get a good amount of plat on you might be able to buy some gear that you don't want to spend the time to camp yourself and that would normally be no drop but you can just get it you know uh, so that's kind of cool um, that element right there the Fiona V server has that free trade element it's uh, known as a role-playing only server which is also it's a special rule set which you need to have a gold or all-access account in order to play on it um, it also Fiona V also has a 50% a permanent 50% XP boost which is really cool I've actually started an alt on there a Shadow Knight I named uh, Manjaro I have a I have a Shadow Knight on uh, Kazakh Thule that's with the same name. So I figure, you know, I don't know. I, I'm just, I don't know, I'm, I'm not really looking necessarily to switch mains, main servers necessarily, but I'm definitely keeping my mind open for the future, depending, I don't know how long this game is going to live, but uh, my mind will be open to possibly switching to this one as it progresses past Omens of War and just have this way dark be my main way dark and my gnome way dark on Kazik Thule just kind of probably end up letting him stagnate I don't know but we'll see the we'll see how it goes see, it, even though I play by myself most of the time still the, the it's important to have a, a, a at least a some kind of population that's gonna have a it's going to have a market of some kind to help things kind of move and go. If you have to get every single thing yourself, power sources, you're going to have to. You're going to be forced if if you're practically the only one playing almost all the time, where there's hardly anything on the market ever. You're going to have to do trade skills yourself, and I hate trade skills. That all that stuff. If, if that happens to this server, is going to be a that's going to be a game breaker for me. I'm just, yeah, I'll just go back to CT or, yeah, I'll stay on FV maybe, Fiona V. Um, I have Fiona V's uh, an older server. It's been up a long time. And I've dabbled on it here and there. And I just, something about it just doesn't really get me. It's super busy. It's always, uh, if not the most populated, among the most populated servers in their whole farm of servers. So, that's that can be a real plus it's also hard to get camps there because of that I've always kind of gravitated towards service that have sort of a medium population nice sort of a best of both worlds you get a pretty good stable economy but yet you know if you're willing to kind of adjust your login times occasionally when you can it's not impossible to get certain camps if you want to get them right if you're in a V, on the other hand, there's a lot of camps that are just farmed 24/7 that it's just impossible to get into. So, eh, that's a, that's not a helpful thing. <laughs> Somebody just took off. Anyway, and when I made this character level one, the nice thing about this server is that there are some good people. I got a guild, almost not really a guild invite, but somebody touched base with me. Um, about their guild and stuff like that. Incidentally, from some videos and things I've heard, the Cowboys and Camels Guild is the big bully toxic s group of players on this guild, on this uh, server. So if I have too many run-ins with them, if I feel like I can't really avoid them in some way without making it just a major pain in the ass, I'll probably just not play on the server at all. Um, people like that just makes you just want to uh, kind of wish you knew they lived near you <laughs> just to know
right? Um, yeah. Um, so it's kind of, you know, you got want to buy key. That's a, I forget what it stands for. Kodiak's Endless Intellect, I think, something like that. Kodak's, Kodiak's. It's a buff that gives you a bunch of mana regen and stuff that back in this era is a major need or major coveted th coveted thing, right? So a lot of people play enchanters on these TLPs. A lot of people play mages, of course, and and some uh, necros also. But uh, necros, they don't. We don't really need the key thing. It's a nice independent thing about necros is that uh, eventually, once you get past level two, I mean, you know, <laughs> you gotta, you will have your lich line of mana regen things that will trade hit points for mana at a rate that gives you your mana regen will be above and beyond what uh, that key buff can give you slightly. It's not a huge difference, but it's, you know, you could, it's your own thing, so you don't have to go begging for key all the time, or you don't have to have a enchanter box to give it to you and stuff like that, right? So, Okay, enough of that. This is about the limit of my playing here on this tune. I was put behind schedule today because my lovable, wonderful Linux machine here um, is going through some graphical updates for the drivers and uh, it doesn't seem like it's fixed the notorious terrain uh, issues I've had with the you know with the lines and the, the uh, what do you call it the uh, textures kind of being screwed up um, so yeah, I was hoping that these drivers would fix it, but evidently not. It's still broken, but I can live with it. Hopefully it doesn't. I've tried to fix it occasionally. It's still, it's not going to work. It doesn't work. If anybody uses Linux that knows how to fix it, and it's not a huge ordeal, give me a shout, and I'll give it a try. I've already took, I've turned off texture caching. So it's not caching textures. I've, from what I understand, that even on Windows, it's uh, a good thing to do to make sure the textures uh, stay consistent. So I don't know. This is Elwood EQ, and this is the new series I'm going to do on Thornblade server with Waydark playing on Pop OS Linux Pop OS made by System76. And I am out of here. You guys have a great day. Thanks.